Hello and welcome to another episode of the Eurovision for Real podcast. I am your host, Alicia Michelle. We have so much to talk about. I mean, this episode is really, really going to be interesting because we are going to be breaking down the controversies of Eurovision 2024 and we're going to be getting messy and I keep saying we're because I'm not alone today. But before I introduce my very special guest, I'm going to have to run that funky theme song. Your vision for real with Alicia Michelle. (laughs) Oh my goodness. With Alicia Michelle and with Augusto from the Eurovisionfam.com team. Augusto, shout out yourself and tell people where you are should I say dialing in from or joining us from? Let's do joining us from. <laughs> yes. Hello, Eurovision fam. I'm Augusto here, dialing from the Dominican Republic. Yes. Come on. Just, I hope it is rainy over there and cold, but I'm sure it's not. Um, It's, it's about to rain. Okay. It's about to rain. That makes me feel just a little bit better. Even though it actually is warm over here. We had like a total like week of, I would say, cold rain darkness it was awful but you know what the turner uh, the the corner turned and augusto i i finally had my moment where i could hop back into lanoia it's officially lanoia season it is you know what's so funny because we're talking about eurovision controversies and i'm gonna go on like a mild rant here like what happened to like common sense and like taking a deep breath like on the internet and maybe it's like in real life too but I just feel like I have been you know like I've been getting exposed because I'm not gonna say I'm exposing myself I've been getting exposed to some clearly unwell people because I literally was doing my like I think my top 10 video And I was like, you know, I do think and I even said in my top 10 video, there were like two songs that I'm like are probably going to come off. And that was like Armenia and Australia. No shade. I'm still going to love them because I'm working with 22 songs this year that I love. Literally, there are 22 songs here that I love. And I, I said that when I was doing my top 10 at the time and I was very clear that it was going to change. I was very clear that I'm like, this is how I'm feeling right now. I was like, but there are three songs that are not included on this list. And I feel bad that they're kind of not here. And it was Ireland. It was Italy. And then what was the other one? Oh, and Serbia. Ireland, Italy, and Serbia were the ones that I was like, it feels weird to be doing this top 10 list and kind of not including those songs. But I had to be real with myself that at the time... I wasn't listening to those songs as much as I was listening to some of the other ones. So really the criteria came down to I was giving some shine to the other ones. So full disclosure, and I mean, and I liked Italy's song from the minute I heard it, you know, but I, I, I was talking about it and literally I was saying I loved the song and some ridiculous individual in the comments was like, you know, I just don't believe her. When she says that I love, I can sense that. No, and this is how powerful it was, Augusto. I can sense the hatred in her voice when she talks about Italy's song. I was like, what is wrong with you? Like People, people <laughs> need to touch grass. You need to relax. Go outside. Touch Breathe. grass. <laughs> Breathe a little. I I'm like, I literally said, I love the song. And I've also been telling everyone on my channel, I'm like, look, y'all, I'm like, it's too cold. And Lenoya began to taunt me because the song gives warm weather. It doesn't even have to be summer. It just gives warm weather. I just need spring. I need some sun. I need cocktails outside. And in the middle of like the freezing 40 degree weather and overcast skies, no, Lenoya just doesn't hit the same. It hits far better for me and my spirit when it is warm out. And I've maybe had a couple of mimosas, Aperol spritzes. I can throw a dress on. And I have said all along, I'm like, that is one of the beneficial things of Lenoya. Because when May comes, 
We're going to be like, we don't even care what it feels like outside. I want my Aperol spritz. I want my sunshine. I want my warm weather. I was like, that's one of the benefits of this song. And yet people still want to get on the internet and click clack. And say, I, she says she likes it. I just don't believe her. What would I get out of sitting here in this chair? Truly, what would I get out of sitting in this chair and telling you I love a song that I don't love? Why would I do that? I'm not getting paid for this. <laughs> like, what would be the what would be the benefit of that? Who cares? Again, what I said earlier: go outside, breathe a little, touch grass, hang out with your friends, go go of life. <laughs> like you're going delusional. I mean, it's crazy, Jesus. but I get it. You know, Eurovision makes us passionate, it's and with true. passion, it begets controversy. And so, of I want to kick this off. And so if we're talking controversies with Eurovision, the first place that controversy tends to start is the national selections. And I'm, I'm just going to open up. I'm going to open up Augusto, and I'm just going to get this one out of the way. My first real deep controversy this Eurovision season, well, actually, maybe two. I'm going to do two. And, and then I'm going to stop talking. So my first one is San Pedro getting the all-wrong staging at Benny Dorm Fest, I mean, period. So I'm gonna just start there. To me, I'm gonna say that that was controversial. I'm gonna say it's controversial because how did that happen? How did you give us that visual music video and everything and then we saw what we saw on the stage? It made no sense. And then my second one, cause we gotta get this one out of the way, um, the international jury at Germany's national selection. Those are my two big controversies from the national selection season this year because I mean, like I said, there are 22 songs. And to be fair, Nebulosa is included in my 22 songs, okay? Zorda is on the ESC Faves playlist. It is present. So, you know, I'm not necessarily upset that we have Nebulosa, but I am just saying this is a strong year. Imagine if we had St. Pedro. Imagine if we had Rick. I mean, talk to me, Augusto. Let me stop. So... I am on the St. Pedro boat. That staging was a travesty, point blank. Like, what was that? We even discussed it in our live streams back during the Benny Dorn week. What was that? I mean, it made no sense. And I mean, and it was even like, okay, if we want to do shadow dancers or something, Okay, there. but that choreography, what what were we trying to do? Is there So You Think You Can Dance in Spain? Do we have So You Think So You Think You Can Dance in Spain? I don't think, uh, um, no. But they have a dance show, right? I mean, they have, I mean, a private network has um, Dancing with the Stars, where okay. Maria Isabel is like uh, a finalist. And it, as, okay. Um, by the week we're recording this, it's on the Saturday of this week. The finale is this Saturday of the week we're recording this. And then um, then TVE is doing a proto So You Think You Can Dance okay. but with celebrities. But it's kind of weird. But the people that are getting eliminated, it seems to be the, the aspiring dancers or something. I don't know. I haven't seen it. I don't know. It's a weird okay. format. Okay. Well, yeah. this is this is what I'm going to say. We need to immediately figure out a So You Think You Can Dance model for Spain. So then we could have some of those dancers from the, because this is like, you know, cross promotional. We could have exactly. some of those dancers that win, you know, work on maybe becoming like featured dancers in some of these performances at Benidorm, you know, for the people who graduate, they can go on. So some people know this, but like, Obviously, I grew up doing musical theater and performing, and I used to dance at Denise Walls. Denise Walls is like kind of like a became like a famous dance studio in the United States because um, of her two sons, one whom passed away. R.I.P. Love you. Give it up. Um, and then her her son Travis. Travis was on. So you think you can dance? I think season like three or th yeah, I think season two or three. But Travis now. He has choreographed opening numbers for the Oscars, literally, like Golden Globes for performers. I mean, like Travis is just like this person. We clearly need to maybe um, give something to really energize and also showcase the dance community in Spain. Just an idea. And I mean, it's a show. I think 
think people will watch. Because oh, I remember they did have one. It was called Fama Bailar. Okay. That was the that was the the form that was very close to So You Think You Can Dance. Lola Indio comes from that show. Oh. She did that show before uh, before doing Ote. Okay. Okay, because that's was, what I thought. I was like, I'm pretty sure they have a dance show. So basically in Spain, we need to get a dance show just based off of that to erase from the minds of Europeans and I guess Americans too, because I'm you know, we're sitting over here. Um, because that choreography was completely wrong. And then the fact that they even propped up poor San Pedro at that press conference after talking about, oh, I'm not going to change anything. Boy, if you don't shut up, <laughs> if you don't be quiet, like we trying to have you go to Eurovision. And, and I'm telling you right then and there, that was the moment. <laughs> that was the moment that Spain was like, well, dang, I guess, I guess we going with, I mean, you know. that song, it's, <laughs> this is, this is something that for amongst my Dominican Latin American group of Eurovision fans this year, everyone is strange out that I am not delusional about Spain as I normally am. They're like, oh yeah. And you have, you have held delusions deeply, Augusto. <laughs> I love you. But the delusions, they've been tight sometimes. Real, real, real tight. We need to loosen them up now. <laughs> My Almaya era, delusional. Mickey, delusional. Blast, delusional. Like deep, extreme, astrospheric era, delusional. And then Chanel was justified, delusional. And so is Blanca, Blanca Paloma. I was justifiably delusional. This year, I'm just like, you know what? I like it, but like, it is what it is. I love it. I bop to it, but yeah. Okay. So then, okay. But what did you think of, well, did you feel like there were any controversies with Benny Dorm? What Was there a controversy with Benny Dorm that you felt? I mean, the public chose what they wanted. I was, I was a little shocked, and I find very intriguing that the jury set up the televote, voted the way that they voted. It was okay. tricky. The okay. tie was a choice. Okay. Okay. The, the tie was a choice. It gave That's us true. TV. It was probably the best televoting segment of all national finals of this year. I agree with that. I think I agree with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It it was the best voting segment. If you want good TV segments, I think Spain, you got to give formula. Keep up the ties on the juries. Yeah. And make the televote interesting, I believe. Okay. Um, Yeah, but were there any other controversies you feel like from the national selection season? I didn't follow that many selections this year, unfortunately. But you did You did Sweden. I mean, Sweden wasn't controversial, right? I mean, because everyone was kind of saying Marcus I mean, and Martinez were going to win. So that wasn't controversial. It wasn't controversial. Like, we all knew that we're going to win. Yeah. So wait, are you saying... So maybe the national selection season wasn't... Th- well, here's a controversy that some people might bring up. Maybe not a controversy, but something notable. Croatia being like you know, a favorite to win this year, who knows what would have happened because baby lasagna wasn't even technically supposed to be in the selection. I think that's that's, controversial. That's crazy. They should be checking themselves. Yeah. That's a good story. That is a good story. They're bringing up momentum. Baby lasagna coming in as a replacement on the national selection, storming the televote on the national final. Like that, not even let three last year, storm the telephone like that not even oh yeah truly truly and so that's why i'm like so maybe not a controversial thing but perhaps maybe behind the scenes at dora it was maybe some controversy of them being like who was on the selection committee again what were they about to who were they gonna and then they weren't gonna let us oh i would hope so i would hope so i well actually i have a national selection controversial thing Pesma za Edovizu. Apparently, so like in Eurovision pockets, not so controversial for us because Teodora, well known, had the hit on um, oh. TikTok, TikTok. 
but they had that girl breast Ooh, yeah, no, with the I saw that on with the teeny tiny wings standing on a platform in a boring dress, not doing anything on the stage, thinking she was gonna win. Now, baby girl, what have you watched Eurovision lately? Sweet honey child, come come lay down here on my lap so I can tell you what would have allowed you to win this national selection. But I think the key controversy with her is apparently her lyrics were, and I'm not going to speak on it, but apparently her lyrics were not only maybe political. Yes. Um, They were political, but the controversy of, I guess, like Serbia wanting to get like some people and some land or something. I Y'all don't quote me on this. You can Google it. But here's the real controversy of it. Because that was already bubbling up. Mm-hmm. And and apparently when people were asking her about it, she wasn't even denying the rumors. So she was almost like, yeah, my song is, you know, maybe what you say. Well, she wasn't saying, yeah, but she wasn't saying, no, my song's not about that. Why are you coming at me o- o- over this? Mm-mm, she didn't even do that. She was like, kind of like, mm, you know, it, the song is open to interpretation. You know, I it, like if this is how my song makes you feel, you know, I just want to make people. I, I, that's not a direct quote. I'm just, you know, I'm acting here and exaggerating probably. But here's the controversial thing. After Teodora won, these people really. And this is, I guess, for some of the, the Serbian diaspora. I think that was like the key thing. These people were really not trying to support Teodora. People were saying they were going to have protests. Augusto, these were protests of five people, I think. (laughs) Maybe they had 20. Maybe it was 20 people standing out of somebody's broadcasting building. I mean, apparently the protests were real sad looking. But that's controversial. Ridiculous. I saw that on Twitter and I was like, wait. They're really wasting their time on that? I mean... To me, I'm just like they have an entry that actually has some momentum. I'm like, look, y'all can send Breskvitsa, you know, after she has a phone conversation with me and we can talk about, you know, like, girl, this is what Eurovision is now. Like, you need to be doing because this is the thing about her. If you look at the back catalog, bangers. You look at some of her other performances, top notch. The girl can sing. The girl can perform. She can put together a good quality song. But that one wasn't it. The song wasn't really it. Even if you don't know what the song, you know, what the lyrics were, the song wasn't really it. And definitely that performance was not it. No, boo-boo. Mm-mm. Since Mm-mm. we are touching selection committees, I'm reminded of something that was exposed in Spanish media Uh-oh. last month. The Spanish broadcaster is messy. You know who, which act of Benny Dorm won the committee. Astronauta, no. Astronauta won the committee. And they ended up last oh. in their semifinals at Benny Dorm. Oh. <laughs> Were they just wow. Isn't that crazy? Like they ended up last in their semifinal and they won the selection committee to qualify to the contest crazy okay so what happened in between what happened in between what went down in between oh that's crazy (laughs) that's that's crazy that's crazy nebulosa won and they were sick and (laughs) St. Pedro was like 14th or 16th something like that okay wow well that's interesting that's interesting Spain is known to make choices and that selection committee of Benny Dorm all of these three years when the Spanish media comes clean with the selection committee results all you can say is choices were made because the order gives you makes you say what are these people thinking ranking these songs this way like Chanel won in 2022 and Rigoberta was second, if not mistaken. Ryan was not sure behind. So, like, 2022 kind of makes sense. 2023 was weird because I forgot who won, but that, but whoever won in 2023 didn't do that well. And then in 2024, Astronauta finishes last in their semifinal. 
a choice. Choices. Okay. I mean, anything else from the national? I, I feel like maybe if this is all we're talking about, maybe I don't know. But as we've been talking, we've been we've been picking out we've been picking out a little bit of spice here and there in the national selections. I don't know. I'm like, what are the big San Remo? I don't think there was anything controversial there. I mean, like, people were shocked that Angelina won. Okay. Because we wasn't Annalisa. Because I think of the girls, I think people thought Annalisa maybe had a slight edge over yeah, Angelina. But, okay. But G, but Keolier smashed the televote. He got like 60% of the televote. Wow. Something. Yeah. Yeah. Like that guy smashed the televote, but Angelina got Sara Stampa like crazy. Right. She won because of Sara Stampa, basically. Like the press was like, no, it's her. She, it has to be her. Pick her. Boop, 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 boop. And then that's Italy. And then in Moldova, I do remember reading on, on the oh, internet. Oh, yeah, because they had a tie. They had a tie. And that's it right. was the jury breaking. It that's was the right. jury breaking the tie. And we almost didn't get uh, Natalia coming back a year vision. That was some mess. Well, was like her- I, but the thing is, I think I actually liked that other song, though. Like, I don't think I was, like, completely against the other alternative. But you know what? Y'all will never know how I felt about the Moldova national selection because YouTube took my video down. Boop. All right. And on that note, I won't be reacting to Etepa um, next year because, yeah, I just won't. I'm I'm not going to do that. If, if people are going to be out here taking down videos and the broadcaster is not going to say anything about that, and I mean, what? Alan Torres lost his channel because of that weird, creepy dude taking down his whole video? Yeah, no. Um, I'm, yeah, so uh, it's it, it's unfortunate that everyone has to suffer because of a weird, creepy dude who can't sing. But here's the thing, but here's what I would say. So maybe that was like a little bit of controversy because, yeah, there's this weird, creepy dude who has um, auditioned before to represent can- Moldova. He does, I mean, he does fit that description. Yeah, he's, he's a weird, creepy dude. We're allowed to say it. I'm not even saying their name, so you can't get me. Um, but there's a weird, creepy dude who year after year, um, you know, and that's my opinion, um, apply, applies and then gets showcased. And the question that I have, and so so then he took down people's videos that were, like, talking bad about him. Um and mind you, like, I think his clip in the video was only, like... 10 seconds or less. Not even 10 seconds. That's the crazy part. And the whole, like, 20-minute video got taken down over, like, seconds with that weird, creepy dude in it. And, but here's the thing. He got the videos taken down. He actually got some Eurovision YouTubers' channel removed. He did get his channel back, thank God. Um, but, like, wild. But here's here's the wrench I'm going to throw in this. Here's the wrench I'm going to throw in this. Why does that broadcaster keep letting him audition? He's not good. He can't sing. It's not a fully open call. So why are you even giving him the forum? And that is why I'm not going to react next year because it's like, if you don't want to take this seriously, I don't know why I should be taking this seriously. I will react when you select your winner. I, I will I will react when the winner is chosen. And that's what we're going to do. Oh, but I was also going to say... um. There was another um, national select, Finland. I don't know if this is a controversy, but but Eurovision fans, Sada Sipola did not win. And we got no rules, which to be fair, I, mean, I felt like the whole time in the season, given the kind of the Finnish public mood, and even just this sense that we felt like Eurovision audiences were looking for it's crazy it's party you know it's fun you know kind of energy I was really honing in of what I thought would win because people were talking about the Vox Populi and they were talking about no rules and so I was kind of thinking it was going to be one of those which is why I was just like well if y'all want to have fun and you want to do something with a little wink and sense of humor Every lucky day, <laughs> cherry on the top, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, come on. Why couldn't I have Cine Sabotage? Just saying, okay, but that's just me, lighters. 
but the whole Sadasipala thing. And I think what some people are now saying is, is the way that Finland has sort of set up their voting, it's like whoever wins the televote is probably going to win. That's and it. so it's like, does it make it? I mean, to me, I don't hate that. The people should be able to pick. So I don't inherently hate that. But it does make for maybe kind of like a boring, you know, voting sequence. If it's just like, come on, if we know, you know, if you're reading the tea leaves of a community, then it's like, Mm. well, what's the point? We kind of already know who might win potentially. I don't know. Um, But like I said, I mean, they did have Vox Populi up in there, which I guess that entry was controversial because I guess one of the guys on there, like... Has made very controversial statements. Yeah, problematic. And I guess there's some stuff in the song about, like, cancel culture sucks or or, I don't know. But but it was like... But, like, the content of it was pretty bad. And I think at one point they were beefing with a Eurovision blogger, which, which I have to say, artists... I I want to showcase you. I want to give you your moment. However, you don't have to beef with me. I'm a regular person. Bloggers are regular people. You do not have to give, like, maybe this is bad that I'm like, you don't have to give fan media the time of day. But, like, you don't have to give random people on the internet the time of day. Like, if it is not rising to the, or maybe it did, though. Did, were, did it rise to the occasion where Finnish media was like, uh-oh, one of the dudes from Vox Populi is is problematic. If it was not in mainstream press, I don't think that he had to address it. Exactly. I, you know, in, in your, theory. Let me be, <laughs> let me be more specific to the point. If it's not in your local mainstream media, do not give it the time of the day. Right. Right. If in it's theory. in your local mar- in theory, if it's in your local market mainstream media, do not give it the time of the day. Keep moving. Keep rolling. You know, there's a bunch of Eurovision fans on the internet that talk about, that are talking a lot of whole mess. bunch of stuff, whole yeah. bunch of stuff. So you don't have to engage with it. I don't know. Okay, what else? Because now that we're 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 on a roll, I'm like, so, I mean, Albania wasn't really controversial this I mean, year because Bess is like a big deal. Bess is a big deal, and now they have a split seat, a split system in in Feek, you That's know? right. The jury picks their winner, that is whoever they want. It was a big hulky guy that that's right, came, that's right, that, with the arms. He had arms, right? He has there very were arms. Big arms. <laughs> he cannot sing at all. He saw, cannot sing. Okay. And then the audience chose a really good performance in Besta. She Okay. The woman can sing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's beautiful. She's, she's be- beautiful. Can I can I talk about something controversial though? Go ahead. I feel like for years, America, well, hold on, let's just, so we had Feek, um, and then it's like Estonia. SD Lau wasn't controversial. We knew it'd be, okay, yeah, so Estonia wasn't controversial. Then we move over. We already talked about Benny Dorm. We talked about Das Deutsche Final. Um, we talked about Melfest wasn't controversial. Norway wasn't controversial this year. I think everyone I mean, was kind of feeling good. It was a thriller in the end between Kaino and God. Right, right. But that, Which I mean, both would have been good. Op- I mean, both would have been good options. I would have been fine with both. And low key, it seems that the the Kaino kind of left a little bittersweet after yeah. this year's UMK. Like we were so close yet again. Right, but, right. They'll be back again. Don't worry, y'all. They'll be back. Um, So then we had that one. Um, We talked about Dora. We talked about Moldova. Portugal, Portugal I think it was fine. Yeah, I think Yolanda was one of the favorites. And I think, you know, I did like Joa Borsch. I I did like that entry a lot. But um, I think, you know, we're good. I know one of the artists at at Festival Dakansa was getting like a lot of hate online. But, you know, I think that's just going to be par for the course now. And, and no brand is going to be able to, like, kind of reel that in. But I wanted to I wanted to highlight. OK, so this is one controversial thing that I will just say as an American and oh, I should say an American woman. I always thought like Americans like would do like the ridiculous plastic surgery and stuff like that. And I kind of always appreciated how Europe, you would go to Europe and people looked still like real people. Like, you know, it wasn't like, 
you know, kind of, what do they call it now? They call it like the IG face where it's like kind of the Kylie Jenner of it all, like the bigger lips, you know, the higher cheekbones, you know. Or the BBL look. And the BBLs, yeah, the teeny tiny waist, the big asses. Oh, well, I guess, yeah, we can curse on here. You know, <laughs> um, you know, so I, I always thought that. But I would say starting around like 2019, mostly in the national selections, I started seeing the aesthetic begin to influence some of my young ladies. And I will say there is this one account on Instagram and I appreciate it. But this account on Instagram is now doing like, oh, like Eurovision performers then and now. And when Augusto... Some of them thens, I was like, wait, huh? Whoa. <laughs> uh, no, that's not the same person. Some of them thens are like, uh, like, because styling, because we can change styling. We can change hair. We can, we can do our makeup differently and everything like that. But some of this stuff, I was like, Europe, Europe. Let's come together, but not on this, not on the IG face of it all. So I just, if I could just take a moment to just tell all my young performers, especially the young ones, you know, if you're going to play with your face, at least wait until it begins to sag or something like, you know what I mean? (laughs) When like, or maybe like if you're going to do it, like, yes, you could do whatever you want to do. But I'm saying from my perspective and the mother of a daughter, I am going to be pouring into her. This is the face you got and you got to love it because guess what? It's going to change. It is like it's going to change and it might change in a way that you prefer how it looks like now. Because what was that one young girl? Oh, I know you like it. Oh, you know, you Bella Rosena. Have have you seen her on the Internet? She does not look the same. It's a whole nother person. She's 16. (laughs) She is a whole nother person. So she was like 16 then. It's only been, it's not even been that long. You know what I'm saying? And I mean, the face began to change before. I'm just like, girls, could you at least wait till 35, you know, maybe before we start yeah. dabbling? Like maybe, I don't know. I don't know. I just, it's, it's, it's the, what the, the Kardashianification. <laughs> Uh, the IG of uh, the IG influence face, and I'm just saying, like they I don't see on Twitter, the yassification, yeah, yeah, the yassification. <laughs> I just just let it breathe, Europe. Well, Augusto, I gotta bring you back because we have so many controversies to cover. We we just touched on the national selections, but guess what? You know, when we come back, we're gonna get There's into these pre. No, we're gonna get into these pre parties because the pre parties ain't done yet. So we got to talk about the pre-parties next. And then, you know, everybody likes to act wild and crazy on the internet. And so then we're going to we're gonna have to get into the internet controversies of Eurovision 2024. Are you ready for it? Yeah, we'll be back. We'll be back. We'll be back. If you haven't already uh, commented on the podcast, if you haven't already decided to follow and to subscribe, what are you waiting for? If you love Eurovision, you want to get this tea, especially these next upcoming episodes. Augusta, we got to do this again, okay? Yes.